The Nittany Lions coming in 37 and 0, winners of 101 straight. Their last loss, September 15th of 2007. They beat the Cardinal two years ago for the title. They beat Stanford again last year for the championship and are now looking for that third in a row. Ariel Wilson will serve it up for Penn State in white. And the Longhorns in the burnt orange get on the board first. This championship match is best three of five sets. Each set to 25 points have to win by two. If we go to a fifth set, that one will be to 15. Fatima Barza gets set in the middle and a ping pong's around and out. Point Penn State. What makes this matchup so intriguing, Karch, is the fact that for the first time probably in three years, Penn State is looking across the net at a team that is just as big and as physical as they are. Matches up at an average of the front row players of six feet three inches each. Working on that net that is seven feet four inches high. And the Longhorns pick up another point here to go up two to one. One of the things we really want to follow through this match is Megan Hodge, how effective she is offensively on one side of the net, Destiny Hooker on the other side. If they're both good, they could cancel each other out. Goes to some other factors. Last setting, Blair Brown got a touch, point Penn State. And if they neutralize each other, certainly you're going to think that Texas has five or six big guns, Penn State fewer, and they're going to have to be great. Megan Hodge, Blair Brown, and Ariel Wilson. Four All-Americans on the Penn State side, including the server Megan Hodge, the National Player of the Year. There are two first-team All-Americans suiting up tonight for the Longhorns as Ashley Engel, who will hit and set tonight, gets the kill. And even though she may not be as good a setter, she brings a lot of offense with that left hand. Had some physical problems, but they have just unleashed her in the semis and finals, said go for it. These are the last two matches of the season. Destiny Hooker, the four-time All-American, gets the ace. And remember, she jumps to touch about three and a half feet above the net. I don't think Penn State's used to a jump spin serve coming down at them like that, falling so shallow. Perhaps the best female athlete in college today. She is also an NCAA high jump champion. Blair Brown setting it out to the Big Ten freshman of the year, Darcy Dorton for the kill. Point Penn State. Dorton, on the other hand, while Megan Hodge plays all the way around, Dorton, number one, putting that ball between blockers is another unproven entity for Penn State. They'd love to get a lot of production out of her. Tough serve from Dorico forces the overpass. Penn State in transition. The back set to 6-5, Blair Brown. She's stuffed. The other side to Dorton, hopped up by Texas. Webster takes a swing off the block and put away by Ariel Wilson. One thing we've seen both teams do is try to establish a middle attack. Texas did it on the very first play, so did Penn State. There's one in transition to Wilson, effective tapping it off the block. Penn State has not been out blocked by an opponent this year. Texas just once in their 30 matches this season. Wilson through the block, point Nittany Lions. And this is something Wilson, number seven, does so well for Penn State, is transition from blocking, sprinting off the net, and then getting right back up. Hodge making the defensive play to start the effort. She will set a new single season hitting percentage record this year in NCAA play. And over 550 as Texas misses wide. Yep, that's number. 18, Amber Roberson, who doesn't receive a lot of attempts out there, but again, Texas wanting to get everybody involved in the offense. A 4 0 run on the Dorico serve. She has been lights out throughout this NCAA tournament back there. Hodge, back row attack. Kept alive by Michelle Cooper. Hodge, Glass, Brown. Dorico passing that ball too low and too close. Now a chance for Texas. Hooker out of the back for Texas. Hooker in some ways more dangerous in the back row than in the front because often she just gets one block up. See how the only one left is number seven, Ariel Wilson, having to block one-on-one. -on -one. 
her blocker to their left. Left side blocker, Darcy Gordon, bailed on the play. Needs to help out on that. Watch it to Hooker again. Tries to chip it by the block and does so for Brown down. And this is why Hooker has been left in all the way around this season for Texas. She hasn't often played back row, but they wanted to play some defense and more importantly, hit out of the back row. Got two straight kills now. Wilson missed it. Point Texas. The Longhorns back on top. That time Alicia Glass really forcing the offense. That was not an ideal pass on which to try to get it to her quick hitter. Service error for Texas, point for Penn State. It's been an extraordinary run throughout this winning streak. The last two years, they have only dropped eight sets. The entire way, they lost the opening set two nights ago in the semis, but they have just been so dominant over the course of this run. They were trying to do something only two teams had ever done, go undefeated, win every set of every match through the NCAAs. That record, not possible now, but they certainly have the bigger one, three in a row, possible. Dorton regroups, and that's blocked. Rachel Adams alongside Julianne Fawcett. Texas up a couple with Ashley Engel, the senior from Yorba Linda, California. This group of seniors is the most successful they've ever had at Texas. And Engel with the tough serve, and Adams pounds it down. Penn State normally having the advantage as the better passing team, but now two over passes and an ace. Clearly, Texas serving better. Penn State not handling that serve, and that explains the two-point difference here. Service error gets Penn State a point. Now Kathy Kroeko, the junior from California, is on. Five feet, one inch tall. And she serves it up tough. And that's exactly what Penn State wants to do. If you look at the Texas passers, they start pretty shallow. So what Penn State wants to do is hit them high at the shoulders, push them back. Somebody like Fawcett there, and in this case, Destiny Hooker pushing her back. The back set off the block. Dorico got it. Now Brown back row, trying to roll it over the top. Pushing it out wide, Fawcett is long. Point Penn State, they are scoring thanks to the serving game of their two shortest players on the floor, the 5-4 Dorico and the 5-1 Quilico. Again, pushing Fawcett back, and she's serving perfectly to Penn State strategy, right in the corner. Now, watch Penn State has stepped up and out of the passing formation. So now we have a new passer, Roberson, in there, but they get the change, and the Libro pass the ball. Megan Hodge with her first attempt, dug up by Hooker. Fawcett rolls. And the miscue. We've seen some trouble throughout this tournament between Glass and Wilson sliding behind. In the last three matches, starting in the regional finals last weekend in Florida, especially when Wilson is going behind and Blair Brown going behind, Penn State's going to need to clean that connection up. Yogi on to serve. Glass goes right back to Wilson. Couldn't put it away. Clicker. Now to Hodge. The block able to slow it up. Fawcett with the rip, point Texas. This is another thing Penn State wanted. They actually want Megan Hodge blocking directly across the net from number one on your screen there, Julianne Fawcett. Fawcett winning that battle on that particular front. Hodge tried to tip. Point Texas, they're up by a couple. Trying to get way too tricky there. She's got a pretty good matchup, especially down the line on Julianne Fawcett, better than in the middle. Take a swing at the high hands. Blair Brown back row. Fawcett looking for Hooker, launches it long. Both teams. Playing with a little bit of nerves right now, some uncharacteristic errors, like Hodge, player, national player of the year, tipping into the net, like Hooker hitting five feet out, long out of bounds. Hooker with a couple of kills, Megan Hodge yet to register one. Kelsey Ream on to serve. Back to Hooker. 
Green got it. Almost a collision between the Penn State players. Hodge blocked. And Alicia Glass collided with Blair Brown, and she was hurt on the play. The St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa for the national championship match midway through set number one. Beth Mullins along with Kart Skirai. Penn State in white undefeated on the season. They have been victorious in 101 matches in a row. Texas looking to end the streak. They are in the burnt orange. They have been number two right behind the Nittany Lions all year long. Point for Penn State. They are looking to become the first team in history to win three straight, two of those back-to-back -back unbeatens. They have the longest winning streak in NCAA women's athletics history as Fawcett slams that one home. The Longhorns looking for their first championship since 1988 and their first time into the final since 1995. This was a matchup that a lot of volleyball fans were expecting a year ago, but this Texas Longhorns team was upset in the semifinals. From that moment, they have been preparing and thinking about this night and another shot at Penn State. And if they, Texas didn't expect this matchup, they were sure hoping for it, so they got it a year later than they wanted to. Would love to break that 101 match winning streak and stop history from hap happening. The first team ever to win three straight titles. It is almost twice as long as the former longest win streak in volleyball history, and it is the best we've ever seen in women's college athletics, better than the Carolina soccer dynasty, Stanford tennis, and the most impressive on the basketball side, UConn, winners of 70 in a row. And the thing that really impresses me is that recruiting is more competitive than ever. This sport is now national. It started with Texas in 1988, becoming the first non-Pacific team to win a title. So in this hyper-competitive era, to win three in a row is absolutely Amazing. And a reason for the success of both these programs, an incredible senior class. They're the winningest for their programs, respectively, led by Megan Hodge and Destiny Hooker. 141 wins for this senior class, and Megan Hodge has been a four-time All-American for Penn State. Most outstanding player of the last two years, Destiny Hooker, who's Volleyball progress has been amazing considering she has not been able to play in the spring times because she competes in another sport as an NCAA indoor and outdoor high jumper, having won several titles. But still, her game has come along to the point where she can be a six rotation player. That's a player who can stay in in the back row. They need her for that offense. She's almost better out of the back row, hitting, that is, having to jump behind that 10 foot line than she is from the front. They are friends off the court, rivals on it. They communicate frequently, but we talked to the players this week and they said, we stopped all communication leading up to the championship match. At least until last night at the All-American <laughs> Banquet when alphabetically Hodge was right next to yep. Hooker and they were having a great time and laughing it up as they both earned a well-deserved first team All-American. Hodge won National Player of the Year and you've got to figure Hooker was a very close second. We are in the midst of uh, set number one. It's best three of five. Sets are to 25, have to win by two. And we saw Hooker break out that hard jump spin. Penn State's going to have to be careful that she can hit it down on the ball as high as she jumps. Like that. Alicia Glass looking to set Blair Brown. Very tentative swing by Brown there. These are also the two biggest teams in the country. Average height of six foot three inches. Yeah, and Dorico has twice now tried to dig the ball too perfectly. You cannot, with the height of this Texas team, put it six inches across the net. You're much better keeping it 10 feet on your side. For those of you new to volleyball, the player with the different colored jersey is a defensive specialist. They can serve, but they cannot attack. And that time we saw Darcy Dorton, number one, the freshman outside opposite Megan Hodge, not being able to control that serve. She only passes when she's in the front row. Back row, she also comes out. Hooker 
That's the take. Glass looking for Brown. Watch out for Hooker. Here she comes. Out of the back. Dug up by Glass. Not a great set to Hodge. Could go right back to Hooker. Instead, it's Roberson. Dorton. Whoa. Texas block has been very strong so far. Coker looking for Angle, tried to tip. Hodge, Glass, Dorton, no. Hooker was calling for it. Long on the swing from Roberson, point Penn State. That's Roman Roberson's second or third error. She again, very inexperienced in these situations. When you have a player like Hooker calling for it, I think as a setter, you want to give her those opportunities. Derrico, tremendous setter. Net violation. Point Penn State. And there is a look at Russ Rose, who in the national semifinals picked up his 1,000th career win. That is the third most all time. And he's questioning the referee. The referee's actually called double net for a play over. They said two players, one for each team, netted at the exact same time. So Dorico gets to go back to the line. She didn't hit that last one very hard, but we saw her come out on fire against Cal a week ago in the regional final. Let's see if she puts a little more mustard on this one. Melissa Dorico, the junior from Byron, New York, had five aces in that Cal match in the regional semi. She's got the most down the Penn State team. Now she goes to the jump float and gets a better result. On the point replay from just a moment ago, Glass to Dorton got the kill. This time Dorton getting a nice step close and hitting it inside the block. That would, every kill she gets is really gravy. The main three for Penn State. Megan Hodge, Ariel Wilson, and Blair Brown have been carrying the offensive load. Angle gets the kill for Coach Jarrett Elliott in his ninth season, his first time in the title match. Brought in that terrific senior class, called Ashley Angle a real program changer when she arrived with Destiny Hooker and their libero, Heather Kistner. She was talking about what a relentless recruiter he was with her, trying to lure her away from Southern California and really help that program get going. Wilson gets the stuff, and we are deadlocked at 19. And that time, what Ariel Wilson did was she just decided, I'm going to stop the quick. I'm going to take myself out of the play. We call that commit blocking. Let's see if she goes again. Nope, she doesn't. Gets a two-person block up. Another very tentative shot from Blair Brown. Not getting good swings so far. The pass now to Glass. Wilson, nothing tentative about that. And Penn State jumps on top. Watch how fast Wilson is getting off to the 10-foot line and then back up and swinging. Third kill for Wilson. Penn State by one in the first. The NCAA Women's Volleyball National Championship is presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Penn State 20, Texas 19. We're going to 25 after win by two in the opening set of our final. Undefeated Penn State once beaten Texas. They've been the top two teams all year long. This is Ashley Engel. Hodge with the pass to Glass and able to push it off the block. Penn State now up 21-19. Glass is so effective with that right hand. If there's a blocker in front of her, she just hits it off the hands out of bounds. And if there's not, she pushes it to the deep corner. Four straight points for the Nittany Lions. The back set to Angle. Sent back. Penn State, the top blocking team in the nation, gets another point. Well, the play didn't start the way they wanted it to. They do not want any serves going at Kistner, number 19 on your screen there in the black, the different colored jersey. They want to keep it on other players who, have, who are not nearly as good controlling the serve, but they still get the block. The Nittany Lions on top, led by their senior All-American and National Player of the Year. Let's get to know Megan Hodge. 
my name is Megan Hodge, senior outside hitter from Penn State. This is my third appearance in the NCAA semifinals. My two favorite TV shows are True Blood and Glee. Over the holidays, I'm going to Las Vegas to celebrate the widget and Miss Ariel's 21st birthday. My favorite place to visit is Brazil. Last time I was there was in May 2009 with my Penn State teammates. Hodge, the 6'3 senior from Durham, North Carolina, the daughter of two volleyball players. She used to track them around and spend an awful lot of time in the gym and had a chance to talk with her dad before the match. There's Michael and Carmen. He said, until about the age of 12, her favorite saying was, I'm never going to be playing volleyball like you two do. And into the teen years, she said, you know what, I think it's time to give this a try. And boy, are they happy that she decided to do that at Penn State. Her coach says she does things, more things, than he's never seen any other play do, player do in 31 years of coaching. An absolutely phenomenal talent who has a very bright future ahead of her playing for the USA team, maybe the Olympics in London, and certainly professionally overseas. He was fondly recalling with uh, tears in his eyes before the match that first day in an August afternoon four years ago when he dropped his daughter off on campus said we were driving across campus and she spotted some of her teammates walking and he said dad stop the van stop the van I want to get out he had unloaded everything in the room she wanted to go hang out with her teammates I know he wants to hang out with mom and dad like get away get away I want to be with my teammates remember it's been a 7-1 run since Texas did not serve or set Destiny Hooker out of the back row that one time oh easy play for Blair Brown just missed it now 7-2 run but Texas really needs to get the ball to Destiny Hooker a lot, especially when she's in the back row. Hooker two, two kills on nine attempts so far in this first set. She and Hodge have been quiet in the kill category. Very quiet, only three between them. Hodge right now hitting negative, and Hooker hitting only 125. Both of those players hit close to 400 this year. That's why they were the leading candidates for National Player of the Year. Angle serves. Glass going to Wilson. Kept alive by Roberson. Hooker. The tip out of the back, got it. And if you saw that time, number seven for Penn State in the white, Ariel Wilson was not blocking and did nothing on defense. She has to pull off the net. She just left space, and that left the tip open for Destiny Hooker. So Texas rattles off a couple in a row. They are back within one. This is a team that was so heartbroken last year in the national semis they were beating Stanford two to nothing and ended up dropping three straight lost and the preparation has been going on ever since that night in Omaha to get back here and one of the uh, visuals that Jared Elliott decided to use was to go break out the boxing gloves he showed them the the movie uh, about Muhammad Ali when we were kings when he was an underdog in a fight against George Foreman and he said, this is the kind of confidence, the kind of belief that you have in, in this team that uh, Muhammad Ali had preparing for his fight. And it's interesting because this team was almost undefeated, and yet they're taking the bunker mentality, the embattled, the team that's not getting any respect. A couple of more points against Iowa State earlier this season, and they too would be undefeated. But they have taken on that mentality since losing to Stanford from that 2-0 lead last year in the national semifinals. And they also have, you saw there, the Hunter Lawrence jersey. He is the field goal kicker that got Texas a second chance with one second remaining in that uh, Big 12 championship. That kept their title hopes alive. And Jared Elliott got the jersey from Mac Brown and brought him to the locker room and said, hey, a second chance for Texas. They took advantage. We need to do the same with our second chance this year. And in fact, as, as that football game was going on, Elliott sent a text to a few of his players saying, look, this is going to be a defining moment for him, and that's the moment we want to be in. They are now in that moment, and there's a jump serve to pull Texas even from Ashley Engel, who does not hit her serve that hard. Had some physical problems this year, but she's figuring this is the last match of her career. She's going to break it out. Almost another ace. Three points in a row for Texas. Hodge out of the back. Rejected. The Longhorns two points away from the set. 
smart by the Longhorns to get three players up on that and slow Hodge down. So Penn State trying to figure out how to stop the 4-0 run for Texas. And the Longhorn Athletic Department, such a close-knit group. We told you about Mac Brown and Hunter Lawrence in that Big 12 championship. And there is the kick with a second left on the clock, down by a couple, and the Longhorns win it. They will be playing January 7th on ABC in the BCS championship game uh, against Alabama. And uh, Mac Brown has actually been uh, conversing back and forth with Coach Elliott. Here's the text he sent to uh, Jarrett to share with the team yesterday. And it's not that even that much of a David versus Goliath, these two teams being so head and shoulders. This is the match that all of the college volleyball world has been waiting for. But one of the nice things about Mac Brown is how supportive he is of other teams in his athletic department. He even sat down with one of Jared Elliott's recruits for 40 minutes one on one a year or so ago. He gives them a lot of time, helps them out. And these are all the teams currently playing right now. Men's basketball, they knocked off the uh, defending champs earlier today, beat North Carolina. Women's hoops is in the top 25, and their swimming and diving teams are both in the top five in the country. So it's a, a good time for Longhorn fans right now. And it'd be even better if they could grab this opening set. They're up 23-22. Some big momentum swings. We had the 7-2 for Penn State. Now the 4-0 scoring run for Texas. We understand, too, some of the uh, football coaches at Penn State have made the trip over from Orlando. They are in bowl preparations as well. Hooker, back row. Coach Elliott really jumping up off the, the bench that time. Felt like it was a mishandled ball, but Destiny Hooker getting that first set point now for Texas. They've got two of them right here. on the serve of Ashley Engel. Dorton, the freshman, no. Engel, the tip rolls. Hodge, back row off speed. No. Outstanding defense from Kistner. And Hooker ends the first set. The two seniors getting together. The third senior serving it up. A 6-0 run to take the opener. Destiny Hooker devastating from the back row. Penn State is going to have to get three blockers up too often that first set. They left the middle blocker all alone to stop her. The two-time defending champs are down a set in the national championship match. And they are on top one to nothing. Let's take a look at the Cook Zero game track. Well, one of the big stats, of course, is the hitting errors of Texas, but that didn't hurt them enough. Just look at that top number, only 11 kills for Penn State. They average about 15 per set. Destiny Hooker leading the way for Texas with five kills. She hit 333. And she was serving tough, too. But watch this next one. Number seven all alone blocking for Penn State. Those outside blockers cannot leave Hooker alone. And then when they do help, the wing diggers in the backcourt have to help out with tips like that. Otherwise, it's going to be a very quick night for Penn State. The comparison here, you see Hooker hitting 333. Megan Hodge only one kill, but three errors. You subtract the three from the one, that's minus two divided by her total of eight is minus 250, way, way off her season total of about 400. And let's get ready to see a lot more of Megan Hodge because two of her teammates were set more than she was, and that does not happen for the Nittany Lions, and Wilson gets the kill inside. Point Penn State. Fourth for Ariel, the junior from Broadview, Illinois. One of their four first-team All-Americans, along with Glass, Hodge, and Brown. Fawcett, two on the block, from Texas. Megan Hodge not getting her left hand strong there. Fawcett tooling it off the block. That should be, that's a matchup that Penn State wants to work better than it has so far. Kissner serving, the senior from Sugarland, Texas. 
And Fatima Balza, one of the newcomers to the starting lineup this year, strikes. Long on the service error for a Penn State team that's been number one all season. Texas number two, nipping at their heels. And adding to the intrigue this year as well, Coach, was the move by assistant coach Salima Rockwell. Played at Penn State, a long time assistant at Penn State, guided center Alicia Glass, and in the off season, not in any acrimonious way, left for greener pastures, if you will, at Texas. She is the highest paid assistant coach. And one of the big reasons why they have been successful with Ashley Engel setting. Coach Elliott, the relentless recruiter, now he doesn't just recruit players, he recruited talent on his bench, on his staff, and she has been a huge upgrade as far as helping her setters, especially Ashley Engel, who only sets part-time, and of course, Michelle Coker, they each set only part-time, but helping them calm down, make better decisions. They love her sense of humor, even if they're making a bad play and they're watching it on tape, they can laugh it off and just figure out how do we make a better one. Still friendly with a lot of the Penn State players. And, uh, has provided for some emotional moments, but a few awkward ones as well. The Penn State fans uh, right behind the Texas bench now. It's funny to see Rockwell in the burnt orange this year in the first season. We had a sign up earlier. You look better in blue. <laughs> <laughs> but not only does she help the set, she's just taken over the whole offense. Coach Elliott loves it how experienced she is. She was a captain of her team, captain of the USA national team. Such a calming presence. He said, I'm just going to hand over my whole offense to her. Glass unable to connect with Wilson. Point Texas up early here in the second set. I think the story so far, Penn State not passing that well. Hodge getting no offense. Wilson struggling. Blair struggling. That's the big three for Penn yep. State. Hodge still has not taken a swing yet in this set as Texas gets another kill. They, can, they cannot get Blair Brown or Ariel Wilson going this time. Brown getting blocked against two. Doris serving the ace. Penn State trying to pass with two. Unable to do so that time. Megan Hodge covering half the court, forcing a timeout. Texas doubling up Penn State eight to four in the second. They already have the 1-0 lead in the national championship. The last two titles looking for a third, but they are in a funk so far through the first couple of sets. They have never trailed 2-0 over the course of the last 101 wins and have only played two five-set matches in the last two seasons. And they come out of the timeout and get the point. Coming into this match, Penn State had on paper a big advantage in terms of being the better passing team, the team that controls the opponent's pass. And there's a rare pool pass from Heather Kistner, the libero for Texas. Tip by Angle. Confusion there are two players for Penn State all over them. But one of the things that a lot of college teams do, they measure their passing in real time on a three-point scale. And after that first set, Penn State getting out past a good number would be 2.4. Penn State only at a 1.9 versus Texas's 2.1. Glass looking for Dorton. Penn State, Dorton showing a lot of emotion. The freshman trying to fire up her teammates right now. Five kills. She's one of the players that doesn't have a trophy yet. Well, who would have thunk it? The leading kill outside hitter or hitter in general for Penn State, the freshman, Dorton. Hooker back low. Penn State again leaving middle 
Watch these two outside blockers for Penn State just bailing on this play. They have got to help. That's leaving two lanes wide open for Destiny Hooker. No wing help from the blockers. Glass looking for Hodge, still cannot get it going. Let's see if they go back to her again. Megan Hodge, the National Player of the Year, finds the floor. And it's especially important for Penn State when they have maybe an Amber Roberson hitting in front of them who doesn't get a lot of swings. They have to think every time Texas can get the ball to Hooker, they've got to watch out for that. Hooker! Wide left. Point Penn State. Boy, those two can bring some heat. Hooker and Hodge. Going to strap on the crash helmet if <laughs> you're going to try and dig that line shot there. Blair Brown just getting out of the way. Hooker more often, as most outside hitters are, patterned much more toward the angle. That time she saw a little bit of line left with Alicia Glass, the blocker in front of her. Angle. Hooker tips it around the block. She is making all the right moves so far. And that last hit, the play before, was so hard she had Blair Brown leaning back a little. Brown thinking, ah, another one hard's coming at me, but she reacted too late to get the tip up. Moving backward because of the heat that came before. We have seen a lot of Penn State over the last couple of years, and rarely do they look tentative which is the word that comes to mind right now. Hodge sent back by Texas. She'll swing again, dug up by Kistner. Look at the hooker. Yes. Well, we talked about it early in the show. Hooker and Hodge could neutralize each other, but it's not that case. Even a great hit over the block. Kistner comes up with it. Hooker has the answer. Hodge does not. Nine kills now for Destiny. Hodge trying to tip it. Hooker rips it. Ten kills for Destiny. And that was not an easy ball to hit from Destiny Hooker. Way off the net. She worked hard with her feet. Got it in front of her. Hit that seam between middle back and right back. There's Megan Hodge. Her third kill. Now again, we'll see which way Penn State serves if they can keep it off the Libero for Texas. No, they can't. Perfect pass and the put away because of that perfect pass. That's what we call in system volleyball. A pass right on top of the setter's head. Texas could have run any one of its three options. They've got no answer right now for Destiny Hooker. 14 to 9, Texas. Fawcett with a good serve. Hooker pounces. And in that last timeout, that was the most animated I've seen Coach Rose in a while. We'll see what he has to say to his team here. But they need to wake up out of their funk. Texas is taking it to them. Penn State not reacting to pulling themselves up off the floor. The Longhorns looking to end this one quickly. 15 to 9, Texas with the lead in the second. They already took the opening set and are trying for the commanding lead. Let's get to know the All-American for the Longhorns, Destiny Hooker. Hi, my name is Destiny Hooker, and I'm a senior outside hitter from San Antonio, Texas. I hold the indoor high jump collegiate record with a jump of 6'6". Six, six. Along with our football team, we hope to win the first of two national titles. My favorite thing to do is to hang out with my best friend and teammate, Julianne Fawcett. And Hooker on a tear right now with a dozen kills. Destiny going to swing again. Got it down. Hitting over 450 so far in the match. Take those kills minus the ears, and of course we got to add a 13th one that she lodged just since then, but that was a three-person block up, and still she hit it around it down the line. Very effective for Texas. They've taken six of the last seven points. Kistner with another good get, and it's all Hooker for Texas. 
tremendous defense giving Destiny another opportunity. Wow, Texas just coming back that much harder. What a read by Kistner to dive and bruise the floor and make that play, giving Hooker the opportunity to finish it off. But that was the, thund the most thunder we've seen all night. No answer for Penn State. We talked about it early, thinking Hodge and Hooker would be about a wash. It's clearly not. Yep. Hooker dominating Penn State. Hodge having no answer so far. Destiny already with nine kills of their 17 in this set. And here she comes again. Number two, Texas. Number one, Penn State. The Nittany Lions quest for a third consecutive championship is in serious jeopardy. Texas has put them in an early fight. 101 consecutive wins. And over the course of that streak, they have never been down 0-2. And they're close to it tonight. And UCLA was the closest team ever at trying to win three in a row. One in 90 and 91, but lost in four sets to Stanford in the final. Now Penn State having that opportunity, but getting really that blown out in this second set. They have just not been able to get on track. And meanwhile, Texas has been getting an outstanding effort from Destiny Hooker. Amber Roberson gets the kill right there. It's hard enough to stop Hooker, but when all the other players start making kills, including Amber Roberson, that number 18 for Texas that time, then it's even more troubled because they can't just key on Hooker. Gordon, she has been the one bright spot so far for Penn State. The freshman with six kills. Leading her team with those six kills, but normally she averages just a little over two per set. Blair Brown with the service error. Texas five points away from a 2-0 lead. We haven't seen some of these serves from Julianne Fossett and from Ashley Engel. They are unleashing on their jump serve and not worrying so much about the errors because they're getting the aces and it's taking Penn State out of its game. Normally Penn State a good passing team, but not so far this match. Willico to serve, down a touchdown. Coming barreling in here. Alicia Glass just a little too far outside. That end blocker for Penn State. And she just rips it in the seam between the two blockers. Glass. Hodge blocked. Fawcett this time on the other side. Wilson setting Hodge the tip. Kissner's got it. Hooker. Glass to Hodge, yes. Megan Hodge has got to be the leader of this Penn State squad. All her experience, four-time All-American. This is the time that she, I think a lot of her teammates are looking to her for that leadership. An opportunity, great opportunity for Penn State to respond to adversity and see how they do the rest of this second set and beyond. Net violation, Point Texas. Kissner will serve. Hodge off the fingertips. And we saw the speed of that set pick up a little bit. That's one thing. The faster the set to Megan Hodge, the more effective she is, the less time walkers have to front her. We'll look for a lot of that the rest of this match is Penn State trying to pick up the tempo. Hooker blocked. Penn State trying to at least get a little momentum into the intermission. Angle. Hooker stopped again. 
Better help by the Penn State end blocker. In that case, Blair Brown getting a two-person block up. Don't want to leave a one-on-one -on -one situation for Destiny Hooker. Penn State starting to show some life. They've taken the last three points. One of the things he's got to be telling his team is, A, outside blockers, you've got to help more when plays are coming down the middle of the court. B, we have to keep the serve away from Heather Kistner, who's the best passer for Texas, wearing the different color jersey. She's number 19 in black. The last play, Penn State was able to do it, keep it off her. her their best target right now is actually a cross-court serve from Alicia Glass to number one, Julianne Fawcett. Let's see if she goes that way. Nope. Angle. Fawcett, the Penn State block, starting to rise to the occasion. Better strong left hand that time, that outside hand of Megan Hodge. And all of a sudden, Penn State's back in it. This is a winnable set now for them. Angle. Hooker. Slowed by the block. Elbowed out of bounds. And so the set points are now stacked up for Texas. Glass to Blair Brown. Kistner there again. Double contact on the horns. Point Penn State, they have taken five of the last six. Kistner's been doing a really nice job positioning herself, especially looking for those cutback shots, picking that one up there, but Texas can't convert. Still set point. Doris, the off speed, got it. And the Texas Longhorns are up to zip on the two-time defending champs. The same position Texas was up last year in the semifinals against Stanford, running out with all the momentum. Stanford was able to turn around, see if Penn State can do it this year. 25-22 and 25-20. And a big start for Destiny Hooker and the Texas Longhorns. 25-22 and 25-20. The Longhorns in command tonight in Tampa. And the Penn State Nittany Lions, winners of 101 in a row, have never been in a hole this deep. The Texas Longhorns have put them there behind the play of that woman right there, Destiny Hooker, with 16 kills. Beth Mullins along with three-time champion Coach Cry and Coach, what does Penn State need to do to get out of this hole? At the start of the match, I thought maybe Hodge and Hooker would be a wash, but that has not been. So Hodge has to pick her game up. Thought the serving of Texas would be better. It's proven that way, but the, the main thing is Penn State has not been able to control that serve of Texas getting out past. We do it on a scale of zero to three. A good score is 2.4. Texas passing a 2-3 so far for this match. P, uh, Penn State only a 2.1, well below their average. It has happened twice before that a team has come from 0-2 down in the finals to win the championship. Two times in the 29-year history of this event. And Megan Hodge getting the quick start for Penn State. And Penn State has switched the matchups in, in sets number one and two. They started with a different server, so they're trying something different to try to get Blair Brown. Oh, and a, not a very a aggressive swing there by Julianne Fossett. She's got to keep that ball over the net and in the court. Megan Hodge, Alicia Glass, the winningest class in volleyball history. Will they have the leadership to get their team back in it and close out their careers with a third title? Only one school has been actually able to win two and get back to that final, UCLA, many years ago. But Texas wanted to be in this position last year. Up 2-0 in the semis, letting that lead slip away to Stanford and thought they could be the spoiler. And they thought they could have ended that streak a year ago. Now they have to do it at 101 if, if they're going to do it tonight. Coach, you've been in these situations where you've been in trouble and all you need is a little taste of momentum to get right back into it. Texas does not want to allow that to happen right here. Well, it starts 
one play at a time. The only thing any player can control is what happens on the very next play. So Megan Hyde has got to, and Alicia Glass. Those two senior, that dynamic duo, have to be leaders and will their team on to winning the next point and then the next. And they're going to have to grind their way through when they're not playing at their best. The great ones win when they're not at their best. They first played together at the age of 14. And over the last four years, they have been critical cogs in this Penn State juggernaut. And when they played together, Alicia Glass on your screen there, number six, was actually pushing Megan Hodge out of the passing formation. Hodge wasn't good enough to control the ball at that time. And now she makes a perfect pass just like that. And Blair Brown is the other critical component here for Penn State who's been quiet so far. Texas really has five or six hitting weapons. Penn State only three. But if Brown's not doing it and Wilson's not doing it and Hodges not doing it, it's five or six to zero. Doris is denied. Outside the Dorton. Penn State getting something going here in the third. Darcy Dorton with seven kills. Hooker, she's a run stopper right there. Point Texas. Again, we've showed it before on the end zone. We freeze it right here. Two blockers are not going to get in to help the middle there. Wide open for Destiny Hooker. Those end blockers have to, wing blockers have to pinch in if Penn State is going to slow Hooker down. Oh, a lucky touch there for Darcy Dorton. She missed that ball and was flying out of bounds. But those wing blockers cannot leave and bail on the middle blocker as Penn State has been doing. I don't think that's a part of the game plan. 7 4. Penn State trying to climb back. They will have to win three sets in a row to win their third championship. Outside, Megan Hodge. Kistner got another one. Wilson, the chip shot over the top for Penn State. But that's really a lucky play. That's not a connection you want to see. Uh, that's not a crisp connection between the two players on your screen there. Alicia Glass, number six, and number seven, Wilson, the hitter. Most important for Penn State, Hodge, Brown, Dorton, Wilson, all contributing with kills early on in the third. And to win it all again, they'll have to win three in a row after Texas has jumped out to the 2-0 lead. Russ Rose lost the first three championship matches he coached in and has won the last three, winning in 99 and now the last two years in a row. Rarely shows a whole lot of emotion over there. He's got his own stats that he likes to keep. He's a statistical guru. the honesty of that interview he gave earlier. He just said, look, we're not competing. This team needs some veteran leadership. We're not getting at that. We, we're getting some production from our younger players, but this is our opportunity to respond. Needs them to pick it up. Not a very good set there. Hooker out of the back row. But that play got stopped because of an extra, a wing blocker helping. This time it's from set long point Penn State. So the difference that time was Alicia Glass, the right side blocker for Penn State, went in and helped and got a touch on Destiny Hooker out of the back row. <laughs> this is the top blocking team in the country. They had 15 blocks against Hawaii in the semis. Serving substitution for Penn State. As we mentioned earlier, Penn State choosing a different starting server. On the other hand, Texas starts with Destiny Hooker in the left front almost every time. They want to get her the offense. Fawcett swooping in, return to center by Glass and Balza. Life in the Nittany Lions. Watch Alicia Glass, number six here, flying out to the outside to her right. Julianne Fawcett never saw her coming. Hooker. Two blockers up on Hooker out of the back. Last two plays, great help by the wing blockers. We've talked about it until now. Wing blockers have not been helping, but that time you saw Megan Hodge leaning in. Hooker this time tries to tip. Reen diving to save it. Hodge is stuffed. 
They'll go back to Megan. Slowed down again by the block. Here comes Texas. Looking to Roberson cross court. Kissner down to pick it up. Hooker got it. Point Texas. What a play by Hooker. And a great up by Heather Kissner. Watch Hooker goes right over the two blockers that time. Penn State doing a nice job, but when somebody goes over you because she's at 10-10 and the net is seven foot four, nothing you can do about it. Even Coach Rose for Penn State has said well, she regularly renders the block useless. She can touch it almost a foot over the top of a basketball rim, and there's the stuff by Texas denying Megan Hodge. Texas doing a really nice job there. Two blockers all over Megan Hodge as she comes barreling in for the fast set. Glass looking outside to Hodge. No. Point Texas. Another mistake by Hodge. That time it wasn't a great set, but she has to keep that ball over the net and in the court. Yogi served it wide. Number two, Texas in the burnt orange, undefeated number one, Penn State in white here in Tampa. Beth Mullins, along with three time NCAA national champion, Karch Karai. Julianne Fawcett with the kill and a point for the Longhorns, who have come out on fire. They've jumped out to the 2 0 lead, and that's a spot that Penn State has not found themselves in in over two years. They have won 101 consecutive matches. But NCAA women's athletics record, and Blair Brown is rejected. What a nice job by the Texas blockers of reading Alicia Glass and adjusting and getting two blockers in front of all three, in front of the one hitter who got that ball. All three were coming very on very fast patterns. It is the best winning streak in NCAA history for the women. There has never been a team that has won three in a row in volleyball. There has never been a program that has gone back to back unbeaten for a national championship. And Texas is trying to end the run here in the third set. Brown cut it. Point Penn State. They've been twice as good as any other volleyball team, better than UConn basketball, Stanford tennis, even North Carolina soccer. But another serve going to Heather Kistner, the leader up for Texas. You do not want the serve to go to either player who's wearing the different color jersey. Penn State not getting the serve to the right players on the court for Texas. Kistner nails on the pass. Hooker gets another kill. That's 21 now in the match for Destiny. Dorton gets dug up. Back to Darcy Dorton. Off the block and out. Point Pitt State. If anything, it looks like Dorton is doing the most exhorting of her teammates right now with this ninth kill far beyond her normal production. And it's the freshman who's trying to get her teammates going. What a nice serve there. That one cross court far away from Heather Kistner. That's the kind of serve that Penn State needs. Keep it away from Kistner. Break down the offensive pattern. Serve the front row outside hitter. Alyssa Dorico, their best server, getting another point for the Nittany Lions. A couple aces for her tonight. Penn State trying to get back in the match after Texas jumped out to the 2-0 lead. They are a set away from a national championship tonight here in Tampa. Beth Mullins along with Karch Karai. We've been talking a little bit about one of the big subplots, and that was former Penn State assistant coach Salima Rocca, uh, Rockwell moving over to Texas this year and very instrumental in not only the uh, setters, but also the blocking game tonight. Yeah, and she developed a lot of the offense for Penn State, so she knows very well how to defend it, and we've some, seen some phenomenal defense, especially the front row, the blockers for Texas. And in fact, in the last time out, we saw her doing all the talking. Jared Elliott laying back, letting her try to get Texas going here after falling down by six. Another effective serve to push it deep and away from the Libro. Offset. Glass looking to Blair, Blair Brown. Sends it deep for the point. 
so very familiar with the Penn State team and sharing some of that knowledge right now with the Longhorns. That was in that last time out, actually. And there was a mistake. The serve goes to Kistner. There's no, it's no coincidence that Texas just stopped the run of Penn State because the serve went to the wrong player. Coaches tell their players all the time. But it's a little funny because if you say don't do something, the last thing they remember is do something. So you gotta say serve here. Serve to a different player. Watch it coming from Engel. Deep. Some more good defense by Texas and Kistner in particular. Talking about how they were so close last year, yet so far after that bitter disappointment of a loss in the national semifinals when they fully expected to be in the championship match. And they've been working hard ever since to return for an opportunity tonight. The last two swings of Blair Brown, the best two swings of the match for her. Very tentative early, getting the ball, making it at a higher contact point in front of her head. Let's see if she can get a better serve off. She does. She serves the, the player she wanted to there, but Texas runs it better. Hart, could some of this too be there? There has been so much pressure on this Penn State team that have you ever been in a situation where when you go oh, down 0-2 for the first time in a long time, they've got nothing to lose? I'd love to have been in a situation of winning 101. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been able to do that. But they're much looser in yes. this set than we saw in the first two. Absolutely. I think a lot of the pressure was off them. They won Coach Rose's 1,000th yep. just two days ago. They got the 101. They got the triple figures there. And now it's just play it out and let it happen. And they just didn't come out with a lot of fire those first two sets. Another good serve by Penn State. Much better serving but then Blair Brown remember coach even talked about it at the break yep. Blair Brown has let five tips drop in front of her there comes another one she has to give up the harder driven ball and position herself about three feet closer so she can make that up 23 kills now for Destiny Hooker the overpass dropped down by Roberson Point Texas for more coverage of the 2009 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Strong serve by Texas. Gets them an opportunity. Roberson dug up. Double contact called on Blair Brown. It's, of course, a, a great month for NCAA championships. Villanova winning the D1 football title. Northwest Missouri State, the D2 championship. And earlier today, Wisconsin Whitewater, a winner against Mount Union for the Division III title. A reminder to the Capital One Bowl Week. We are in the midst of it. Here on the ESPN family of networks, we've got Southern Miss and Middle Tennessee State in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. That's on Sunday night at 8.30 on ESPN. It's Capital Bowl, Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com. Sunday at 8.30 is one of 34 bowl games on the ESPN family of networks. All starting today and leading up to the BCS Championship on ABC January 7th with the Texas Longhorns and the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's uh, the numbers game for Southern Miss and Middle Tennessee. Should be a high scoring affair. They're both over 30 points a game. And they will meet on Sunday night. Right now, 20 to 17 Penn State here in the third. Some people might not have noticed this, but watch this play as it develops. Blair Brown's going to try and save the play from deep here. Go ahead, run it. And she puts it over the net and watch Destiny Hooker jump in there and take it away from the Libro. Nobody ever does that if you're 6'4 and you're thinking about hitting, but that's how her ball control has improved. She's pushing everybody out of the way and ready to try and lead her team to a title. What a memorable night for her so far. 23 kills, hitting over 400. Penn State trying to get back in it. They need to win the next three sets to win the title. Ariel Wilson does that on a regular basis for Penn State, but since last week, they were great against Florida in this regional semifinals. We've not seen that good a connection. She does that routinely. It's the first time, though, tonight she's had that kind of crush down the line. Come on, Blair. Come on, Blair. 
Cross set. Pushes it across to Brown. They go back outside to Hodge. Angle was there. Saved it. Free ball, Penn State. Glass looking to Hodge again. Down the line. Whistle against Texas. The real difference, I think, is the serving for Penn State this game, Beth. They're getting it to the right people. That last serve went to number 18, Roberson, and kept it away from 19. We'll see where this one goes. Cross set. Green out of play. Point Texas. Green being a middle walker, she got off a great serve, but didn't get stopped and balanced on defense. Of course, she doesn't play a lot of defense. The person coming in for her right now, Alyssa DeRico, is the normal defensive specialist for her. Bad break for Penn State there on a playable ball. Sydney Yogi, the sophomore from Honolulu, in the same high school as President Obama. Hodge missed it long on point, Texas. Trying to extend her career. At least one more set is Megan Hodge. Blair Brown, back row. And it's back-to-back -back hitting errors. Two unforced errors by Penn State. Texas, Yogi doing a nice job of serving very short, forcing Fatima Balsa to take that. This time, Hodge takes it. Kissner looking for Hooker. Billico got it up. Hodge couldn't put it away. Angle looking for Destiny. That time Brown covers the tip. And that time she got Hodge another swing as a result. You call it that Brown doing a nicer, a better job of picking those tips up. Give away some of the deep hard hits for Hooker. Come in and get those tips when she breaks it out and it gives Hodge another chance to win the rally later. Our crack statistician, Mike Sondheimer, letting us know that's 10 kills now for Megan Hodge. She's back on track, and here she goes again. Yogi popped it up. Glass. Brown. Set point, Penn State. Brown also has come alive in this third set, and Penn State needs all of her production. Remember, she picked up a lot of the production that was lost by those two graduating All-Americans, Krista Hormato and Nicole Foster from last year. Texas stays off one. Texas, of course, has three returning All-Americans. The only one they lost is sitting on their bench, Lauren Paolini, the great middle blocker for them. Three more set points. Hodge, Glass, Hodge, Kissner is there. Hodge missed it. Starts with the defense of Kissner, and all of a sudden. Timeout, Nittany Lions, as Texas has saved two set points. They've got two more to go. Well, now Texas has a chance to set up its defense, knowing the ball could well go to Hodge again. 24-22, Penn State trying to get back into this match. Beth Mullins, along with three-time NCAA champion, Kurt Skarai, and the Longhorns looking so strong through those first two sets. Penn State now finally getting their game together here in the third. And it really starts with the passing of Penn State. We talk about those numbers on a three-point scale. Penn State, this set alone, passing much better at a 2.4. Texas down a little, and that explains why Penn State is up by two points. But the other thing is, I think Blair Brown coming alive on offense. If they get Wilson back, then they're back to their big three, and it could be a long evening. It is a, an historic night here in Tampa as the Texas Longhorns try to end the incredible run that Penn State has put together. They're looking for their second national title, but the first one came before any of the current Longhorns were even born. And for the Nittany Lions, Will it be an historic third win in a row, or will the history end and the longest winning streak in NCAA women's sports history come to a close here tonight?
Texas a good opportunity here with their assistant coach Salima Rockwell who knows this Penn State offense so well to set up the play what they want to do with their blockers and their second line of defense the backcourt. Penn State trying to become the third team to rally in the final from an 0-2 deficit to win it. Penn State has all three hitters. They could go to Blair Brown behind. They could go to Hodge out on the left side. We'll see if Blair comes screaming around. She does, but gets blocked. A third consecutive set point denied by Texas. One more to go. If I were Texas, I'd be looking all over to Megan Hodge now. We'll see if they're... Coach there is screaming to try to make a blocking switch. Nope. Glass goes to Hodge. Doesn't get good contact. Texas for the tie. And Hodge finishes them off. And a whew, sigh of relief from Megan Hodge as the two-time defending champs refuse to go quietly into the Tampa night. They are not done yet. They are friends off the court, rivals on it. Hodge with two titles to her credit. Hooker trying to close out her career with one. So this is the same matchup that coach Russ Rose of Penn State switched to for the third set and they won. Engel looking to Fawcett. No, what Penn State to open up the fourth. Not a very smart hit that time by Julianne Fossett. When you're late and there's a good block, low set, the last thing you want to do is hit low seam and Megan Hodge all over that. Texas wins this set, they win the championship. Penn State wins it, we will go to the fifth to decide it. Two years ago, Penn State was up 2-0. Stanford came storming back, but Penn State great in the fifth. Now Penn State having that opportunity to come back for the first time in that 101 match win streak. Kistner, who has been dynamic tonight with her defense and her passing. Blair Brown. It's really about five weapons for Texas. About three for Penn State, and Brown is one of those three. She's been much more effective in set number three, and so far starting well with a good hard hit down the line. Nine kills for Brown. Engel looking to Fawcett. She gets it off the block. Julianne with her eighth kill of the match. The junior from San Diego, former national freshman of the year. And that last hit was a much smarter choice that time. Three blockers up. She hit high off the hands instead of the low seam. And she's really been bringing it this whole match, playing with great confidence. A big improvement. She struggled a little in her sophomore year, came really back very strong this junior year. Dorton gets the kill. Darcy Dorton now with 10. She's into double digits to join Hodge. That's a nice serve for Penn State. Can't but take advantage of it with Destiny Hooker getting her 24th. They got exactly the serve they wanted. They served Ashley Engel, got a fairly poor pass. But when you have a player who's 6'4 and the NCAA high jump champion, sometimes there's nothing you can do when, even when you draw it up perfectly. Serves it into the net point, Penn State. Touches 10, 10 and a half. She has won four individual NCAA championships as a high jumper. Says it would be even more special to do it because of the team dynamic as just a piece of the puzzle here for Texas. That's right, she's jumped, high jumped six foot six. That's close to the top of the net. Imagine her just getting over that net with the old Fosbury flop. Very effective serve by Penn State that time, creating the overpass. You'd be hard pressed to find a better athlete in women's Whoa. college athletics and a collision between Engel and Hooker. Pushed over by Alicia Glass and they slammed into each other pretty hard. They really did. There was great confusion. Engel still limping around a little. Hooker and Engel went for the same set. It looked like it was for both of them. And again, they're playing the 6-2 that they just switched to a few weeks ago. So Engel has not been a hitter all year long. Here's that collision again. Two, two hitters, ooh, going down for the same set, but it stays alive. 
And now Coach Jarrett Elliott calling a timeout, letting those two players cool off a little bit, shake it off. He's arguing to that last call that went against Texas. They're down 6-3 here in the fourth. Texas winning the first two sets, Penn State the third, and they are up early in the fourth. And let's go back to that last play that Jared Elliott was arguing about. Well, well, we saw the crash early in the rally, but later on, Alicia Glass throws it down, and Jen Doris, number eight on your screen in the burn orange, right here, tries to play the ball up with a fist, it looks like. She got called for a lift, and that's what Coach Jared Elliott was arguing. He felt that that was not a lift. The danger he has in arguing too much is that the team starts focusing on other things. They really need to get back to passing the ball. There's a great pass by Ashley Engel. Oh, nice shot. Hand kick there. Rico kept it alive. Kistner got to it for Texas, and now Destiny Hooker is blocked. And how many were up to that time? <laughs> Early in this match, the only player up at the net was number seven. Watch Alyssa DeRico come flying in here. What a great up. Just with the left hand. When it goes to your left, you want to go with your left hand. And then good help by the wing blocker that time. They've got it. Free ball for Texas. Engel. Engel coming for the X. Coker. Doris. No. They'll try again. Hooker out of the back. What an up. Right at Blair Brown at about 60 miles an hour. Last tried to dunk. Nice read by two Texas players all over that. That's the dunk. Blocked by Hodge. Engel couldn't take a chance, had to dig it up. And now they're stuck for Penn State. Jarrett Elliott quickly up off the bench saying, hey, let's settle down. Texas. And again, an out of system play, a broken play. It's hard to swing low seam. That was a well formed block by Penn State. Another nice pass by Angle. 5 0 run, and the Penn State fans have something to cheer about. Watch Coker coming out of the back. Nope. Coker gets the kill outside the ropes. Point Texas. I thought for sure that ball was going to Destiny Hooker. She's the one who was really. She calls herself the ever ready, the bunny who just wants to infuse her teammates with all that energy. When they get her going, they get going. Doris, the serving error, giving Penn State a free point. And Penn State cooling Hooker off just a little bit is giving itself a chance. In this particular formation, Kistner is standing in the middle. Three Texas passers. Angle to Coker. And the kill. Rachel Adams, the sophomore from Cincinnati. Six now for Rachel. And Angle will go back, the left hander to serve. Yeah, Adams really happy not to be playing with that race that she had to use all last season after she strained that MCL. Glass to Hodge. Kistner again. To Barza. Setting up the middle. Alicia Glass picking her spots, trying to get a player who doesn't normally notch many kills involved just enough so that it keeps the opponents honest. Angle finding Adams, making some noise now in the fourth. Sydney Yogi comes on to serve. Glass looking to Megan Hodge. Yogi dug it up for Texas. The quick counter. Hooker. Yes. Destiny with 25 kills tonight. That's the transition that Texas was so effective in set at and sets one and two. Digging by Kistner. Termination by Hooker. Rolls over for Penn State. Now Texas. Adams again. Angle trying to mix it up. Adams notching a, a few 
Effective kills here in transition against a one on one ball. Blair Brown, no doubt about that one for Penn State. The previous play, Penn State wanted to run that same thing, but Blair Brown went, ran to a different space on the court, so she had to just barely get it over. Penn State's got to clean up its communication. Can't have any doubt between setter and hitter. Darcy Dorton, Yogi down to pick it up. Now Fawcett with the tip. Dorico covers. Balza cannot finish. Here comes Engel. Adams take it over for Texas. Undefeated Penn State in white. The two seed Texas Longhorns in burnt orange. Texas trying to deny Penn State what has never been done before, and that's win three consecutive Division I volleyball championships. Destiny Hooker with 26 kills. And for the Nittany Lions, for the first time in two years, they are down 0-2 in a match. And that 101 consecutive win streak is in serious doubt. the antenna point Texas and they have come back to tie it up here in the fourth. Now, there are so many eerie similarities between the 1992 UCLA team that tried to win three in a row and this Penn State team four returning all Americans same thing. Four set with the stuff and Texas has the lead. Lost the first two one to third but lost in four. Penn State might have that happen here. Timeout Penn State. Seven long run for the Longhorns. And the solo swat for Julianne Fawcett. Back at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa where the Texas Longhorns, after that bitter disappointment of a loss in the semifinals a year ago, trying to win the national championship, it would be the program's second. And the first time they won it, none of the current players was even alive back in 1988. As Engel just said on that tape, I wasn't even born at that time. Got to it in 95, also in the final, but lost to Nebraska. But in a great position here after being down early on that seven-point run, now up by one. Glass looking to Megan Hodge, the national player of the year, gets the kill for Penn State. And if Penn State is going to get going, it's got to be Hodge. He's hitting only 104 on the season. She's hitting 386. Meanwhile, Hooker close to her season average, carrying the Texas offense. Blair Brown looking to Darcy Dorton, tried to push it deep. Kistner is there. Here comes Texas. Destiny Hooker. Hodge tried to tip it out of the back. Dorton now swinging for Penn State. She's blocked. Looking to Hodge out of the back. Off the block and out. Penn State back in front. We've talked about it this postseason, working off the ball. And in that case, Darcy Dorton got blocked. Almost certain point going toward the floor. And then a great cover by the Libero, Alyssa DeRico, keeping it alive. That's a working off the ball play, much like rebounding in basketball. It has happened twice in championship history where a team has rallied from an 0-2 deficit to win the national championship. That is what Penn State is trying to do tonight and certainly comes plan a seed in Texas head because not only was that a disappointing loss in the semis last year, but it was a loss where they were winning 2-0 and drop three straight to get eliminated. And I mentioned it once before, but the Penn State's not playing its best. A lot of that is Texas taking Penn State out of its game, but the great teams figure out a way to win. Even if they only have 60% going, they figure out how to get 100% of that 60%, and Penn State, to really show its greatness, would be able to come back here in the fifth. Destiny Hooker has tied her career high with 27 kills in the biggest match of her life. The one set, these four, that she got slowed down was the one Penn State one, but now she has Texas in good state, in a good state here, going down the tarmac to launch. Wilson had a long way to go for that one. Kissner pancakes it up. 
Double contact called on the Longhorns. Point Penn State. Another nice stop by Kistner. But of course, Roberson not able to control that ball. A mishandled ball. You hate to have that happen when you make a great defensive play. Coker. Roberson slams it home. But she sure makes up for it with that one. I like what she did there. You see, she didn't try to hit down steeply to the floor. She hit the last five feet of court. Very rarely will that get blocked to the floor if it gets blocked at all. All tied up midway through the fourth. Glass to Hodge. Nice get by Hooker. Roberson long. Penn State back up by one. That was a nice up by Hooker. She's not expected to play a lot of defense. They keep her in the back row. She's doing a little more passing, a little more defense, but they really want to use her in the offense. Maybe coming here. There's Hooker against the triple block. Hodge! The two-time defending champs, up two in the fourth. We talked about it early, Penn State. Walker's not helping out, but in that rally, they helped out a lot, got the touch, and then Hodge gets the kill at the end. Timeout, Texas. They win this set, they win the title. In this race to 25 points, you have to win by two. Penn State wins it, we'll go to a fifth. And we've got another one versus two showdown for you coming up in basketball on Wednesday night. All part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers, undefeated Stanford, undefeated UConn. For more information, log on to ESPN.com and check out the action Wednesday night at 5.30 on ESPN2 and a matchup of the two teams expected to vie for the championship next spring. Stanford a win today over Tennessee. UConn has one more game tomorrow before that showdown with Stanford. Much like all season long, the expected matchup yep. in the volleyball world, and the volleyball world was hoping for it as clearly the two best teams of the season, Texas versus Penn State. Everybody's getting their money's worth tonight. The Longhorn Volleyball team trying to set the tone for the rest of the sports currently going on at Texas. Of course, the football team will be playing in the BCS championship. Men's, women's basketball, swimming and diving for the men and women. They will all be in contention for a championship throughout their seasons. And yesterday, Jared Elliott heard from football coach Mac Brown got this text about David and Goliath. Tell the ladies, I wish I could be there. I will be in spirit. Hook them, Matt. And a very tight-knit athletic community in Austin. They are all rooting for Texas here this after or here this evening. They already beat North Carolina in men's basketball earlier today. Ashley Engel. Strong serve. They'll get a free ball. Engel looking to set, foot set, got it. Remember that missed serve by Ariel Wilson coming out of the timeout. Penn State had Texas down by two, forced that timeout. One of the surprises that's gotta be shaking Penn State up a little is this serve of Ashley Engel. She has not been jump spinning a lot, nor has Julianne Fawcett, and they've both broken out the heater. Put Penn State in trouble through much of this match. Sent that one long though to get Penn State the lead back. Short floater from Glass. The block slows it down. Megan Hodge cuts it cross court. For more coverage of all of the 2009 NCAA Division I championships, go to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Julianne Fawcett, Quillico with the pass. Hodge gonna get another swing right at Kistner. The back set for Hooker dug up. Diving saved by Dorico. Now Engel in transition. Hooker swooping out of the back. Three blockers were there. Good help by the wing blockers that time. They'll go back to Hooker. Dorico got the tip up, but they couldn't bring it up a second time. And Destiny Hooker with a new career high. In the final. Wow. Seven percent for <laughs> average. 
is about five. She's way over that, and actually a little bit of a break for Dorico there, or, or a bad break, I should say. She had read that well, but when it hit the net and hung on that, it rolled farther outside toward the sideline. She couldn't adjust. Brown's tip is blocked. Adams was there at the net, pushed over by Megan Hyder, and showing some emotion now. Penn State five points away from forcing a fifth set. Glass has talked about it. Sometimes she'll put sets up that aren't great, that are too tight, but she always has Hodge there to save those, and that was a perfect example. Most players couldn't have saved that and gone over the block, tipping it down for the point. Good serve away from the Kistner. Destiny Hooker elevate on this play. Broken play just right over the block in the corner. Hodge has to start leaning a little more that way in her middle back position on defense for Penn State. Last the back set to Blair Brown. The block going too far for Texas, leaving a little angle for Blair Brown. She crushes it inside the middle blocker. 11th kill for Brown. That time the serve goes to Kistner. Texas able to get a good pass. Now they'll go back to Hooker. Here comes Penn State Brown again. The tip no. Not a very aggressive swing. Hooker couldn't put it away. Here comes Hodge out of the back. Nope. Brown has to work harder getting off the net so that she can then getting away from the net so she can run forcefully and fast back in to get a better swing that, than that very soft tip that she sent over. To 25, have to win by two. Glass, Dorton is blocked. Engel and Doris were there. Wilson, Engel got a touch on it. Wilson shoves it back. What a huge play by Wilson this time, reaching her hands across and taking a little more angle. Hooker didn't think she was there. Dorton, Yogi with some good D. Glass to Hodge. The seniors on. Texas. Texas trying for a second championship and trying to deny Penn State a fourth and an unprecedented third consecutive. And she's been dangerous here if she gets it over the net. Texas trying to tie it up. Good pass. Wilson terminates. What a pass by Megan Hodge right on the money. That way Penn State could run the offense on a very tough serve by Destiny Hooker. She got it in that time. Now Texas trying to pass with two. Just Ashley Engel and the Libero. Coker looks to Engel. Brown digs it up. Hodge. Hooker was there. Glass. Saved that play, the ball almost fell, and she kept it alive for Hodge to take a swing. What a play. Angle. And a dig by Quilico. Glass, Hodge. Here comes Texas. Hit her out of the bank. Quilico again. Roberson, no. Hodge, Looker is there. Another free ball for Penn State. Glass tried to dump it. Hooker with the tip, covered by Dorico. Hodge, yes! Championship. 
Championship. How about another undefeated title coming from 0-2 down to get it? Number one, Penn State. Number two, Texas. A fifth set to decide the championship. Texas wins the first two. Penn State wins the next two. And we are going to a fifth set as good as advertised for the top two teams all year long. Beth Mowens and Karch Karai. And Karch, what's the strategy now for these two in the fifth? The big question for Texas. They had a certain matchup the first two sets. Then Penn State adjusted three rotations. Does Texas change it or do they start the same way they've been doing but then have a bad matchup those last two sets? Let's watch where Destiny Hooker lines up. If she lines up in left front, Texas has changed nothing and they're gonna stick with the same plan. And it looks like she may be left front again. Yep, Texas is starting the same way. I was guessing that Texas might switch it, but it's the same way it was for set number three, set number four. Those are the two sets that Penn State won. They liked that different matchup with Alicia Glass starting to serve instead of a different one. Hooker with a career high 29 kills. Megan Hodge with 18. The two four time All Americans shining here tonight. Hooker has been phenomenal, and Hodge has been just good enough to help her team claw its way back. The great ones do have to figure out a way to get it done when some parts of the game are not working. She made a great pass late against that Destiny Hooker. Um, that laser that came on the jump spin. So Hodge is able to still pick up the other parts of her game, play defense, pass, ball control, block. This set is only to 15 points have to win by two. Texas on the ball first. Just the way Texas came out to start the match, setting quick. Still, Texas, surprisingly, for the overall course of this match, is passing a little better, a little better passing numbers than Penn State. And the other big thing, Penn State two years ago was in this situation, a set number five. Last year, Texas lost being up 2-0. We'll see if the experience of Penn State can win out. Serving in, but to the wrong person, watch out for destiny. Got it by the block, 2-1 Texas. been stopped all night. She doesn't get very many opportunities, but they really carefully pick their spots. That's not a good sign for Penn State. First error for her. Glass looking to Dorton. Blocked again. Through the block for the freshman point Penn State. Darcy Dorton having an awfully nice match as a freshman. Hitting almost 300 now, and that time the block left just too early on it, on its way down by the time the ball got there. Coker to Doris, sliding behind, covered by Glass. Hodge the tip out of the back. Hooker got it. Engel did not get it down. We're even at three. Engel just getting under that ball a little bit. She and Hooker. And of course, Kissner, the seniors that need to lead this Texas team. Engel gonna give it a go. Brown looking for Hodge out of the back. Hooker got enough of it. Hooker down the line and in. You're right, Hooker coming up with a fisty there and just keeping the ball alive. Texas needs to set Destiny Hooker a lot, ride her success for a title. 30 kills now for Destiny. Glass to Blair Brown. Time to four. Hooker getting off another very strong serve, but the player who sat next to her at the All-American Banquet last night, the two players vying for the title of National Player of the Year, Megan Hodge, controlling it perfectly. In the rally scoring era now with 32 kills. And 
Texas could just set her every single time. Yeah. She's a front row player. She's a back row hitter. That would be a new de definition of a six rotation player to set her in each of the six times you receive serve. Another nice pass by Hodge. Wilson pounds it down. Even at five. The streaks for Penn State. 101 wins in a row. 17 consecutive in the NCAA tournament. There has never been a back-to-back -back champion going undefeated both times. There has never been a team to win three titles in a row. Texas trying to prevent it. And they've got the lead back at 6-5. So pretty good volleyball right now. Both teams in system running the offensive patterns they want to run. And it's just one kill after another. First ball kills. Angle. Dorico with the pass, Glass looking for Hodge, set back and down by Adams and Fawcett. The first two point lead of the set. Wow, Rachel Adams working so hard just to get her hands across there. Nice touch. Hooker plays it back across, Glass. You see that last set, very fast speed. It barely, barely got over the height of the antennas. That's the set Hodge attacks the best. When it's fast, it forces her to run in quickly. She jumps higher. Ask Russ Rose about his seniors. The winningest class in the history of the sport before the match. He said, nobody's been better at winning than they are. I'll take them any time in a tight one. She got blocked early in this set. Finally gets a block for herself here, reaching to her right. Well aware and seeing the cross-court shot that time attempted by Adams. Green, the State College native with the serve. Long place to serve. Pickers tip, Green. Out of bounds, really, Texas on top. Really heads up by play by Hooker there. Tipping to the player who had just served. A middle blocker instead of a libero and the tip goes down. Midway through the fifth set, the teams will switch sides. A one point Texas advantage looking for their second title. Penn State fourth, it would tie Russ Rose for the most championships. With John Gunning and Don Shaw. Maybe each one for a piece. About two years and a day ago, he only had one. <laughs> Eight points away from an unprecedented third, but Texas just seven away from history itself. They wanted to be the team that took Penn State out of that streak one year ago. Let's take you back to last year's semifinal when they were up two to nothing and cruising. And Jared Elliott said, hey, we simply lost our focus and lost our concentration, and they lost three sets in a row. Stanford went on to the final and got swept by Penn State. They shook up their preseason routine. They had summer workouts at 6 a.m. Everybody stayed in Austin over the summer to work out together. And it was all geared towards getting past the semis and giving themselves a shot at a championship this year. And it's been because of that fighting spirit. They've been carrying the boxing gloves with them this season. And they are looking to knock out the two-time defending champs here tonight. There have been a lot of punches thrown by both teams tonight. And it's last team standing. What a match. All it's been built up to be. This has been anticipated since August in the world of women's college volleyball. The clear, the number one preseason, the number two preseason. They stayed that way the entire season, right on into the NCAA, seeding the two teams, one and two. And they will be talking about this Penn State team for a long, long time. And what a capper to their story it would be if they could finish it up here in the senior class, down 0-2 to win the finals for a third straight year. The races to 15 have to win by two. Megan Hodge slowed down by the block. And Hooker's tip is set back. I'm not sure that was a wise choice by Hooker. They had another touch. She didn't have to tip that ball and gave the opposing blockers a chance to throw it to the floor. Angle looking for Fawcett. Hot 
Swift wants it. Hodge gets it. Hodge cannot terminate. Hodge isn't get, getting quite off the net far enough in transition. She needs to turn and run away and then run back. Just got under that ball too much. Didn't get a good strong approach. But look for this senior pair, Alicia Glass, the setter, and Megan Hodge to work their magic. Try to get the ball to Hodge a lot in the last few plays. Glass gets it to Hodge. Texas couldn't track it down. Set number five in the national championship match. Undefeated Penn State once beaten Texas. The top two teams all year long. We are tied in the fifth after Texas took the first two sets. Penn State the next two. And fourth set gives Texas the lead. The fourth title for Penn State. It would be a third consecutive for the first time in the sports history. Texas five points away from the title. Blair Brown with the kill. That's the player who has to get set in that last rotation. Megan Hodge is in the back. Ariel Wilson's out of the game. Blair Brown can come up with a few key ones on the other side. Got to look for Hooker to get the ball here. And she does. That's the natural choice. Watch her come flying from the right part of your screen. Look at how high she is right over again as her opposing coach says, rendering that block useless. Now, can the other team control that hard serve? Oh, what a nice save. Blair Brown right at Hooker. Jordan, second chance and they get it. It's a four point game. Hit the net. I'm not sure she did, so he wants to cool off. You're not allowed to touch the net in volleyball, but the net was jumping. So when she takes this swing, is it her hand hitting the net or is it the ball hitting the net? Texas feels like it was her hand. Let's see right there. No, the hand did not hit. That was all ball. You see how she stopped her swing. Had she followed through any more, she would have touched the net. But you can see it pretty clearly. The ball actually pushed the net down, and there was space between her hand and the net. We'll see it one more time. She did a nice job of holding back. And I think Texas's coaches are doing a nice job right now of not protesting that call anymore. They have to focus on the next yep. play. Set up what they want to do on offense in the timeout. Get a good pass, get a good set to a, to the proper hitter in that situation. So Texas making the right choice. Don't dwell on things you can't control. Penn State with its first lead of this set. We are going to 15, you have to win by two. One other note, both teams passing very well this, this particular set, this fifth set. And I think it's just because there are some nerves. They're not serving as tough. They want to keep the ball in the court. And that's probably a good choice. Keep the ball in the court. Make the other team beat you. Penn State, 101 wins in a row. Looking for the third straight championship. Trying to come back from an 0-2 deficit tonight. Texas trying to put those streaks to bed and Brown with the service error. Coach Rose looking very cool over there, marking down another stat of something that didn't get done right, but boy, was that a bad miss. Force a team to call a timeout and then serve it into the bottom of the net. Doris serving for Texas. Oh, that was out. Dorton makes them pay anyways. What a huge play by Jordan. The freshman doesn't have a ring for himself yet. Not a part of the last two titles, and she has been that emotional center tonight. And she took the number of the player who does have a couple, Nicole Foster, who graduated last year. Hooker! Looking for a touch? No! Two championship points to come for Penn State. And you 
could see the Penn State bench, a couple of the coaches screaming, watch for the tip on this next play. Hooker hit that last ball out. If she gets a little tentative, she always has the play that could get her out of trouble, and that's the short tip. It's been working for her a lot, but it's easy to control if you're in the right spot. Penn State looking for a third straight. Let's revisit the last two. Three ball, Nikki Lyons. Glass to Megan Hodge. It's over. The Penn State Nittany Lions are the 2007 national champions. Krista's going to set it. Fawcett running in. Off the block. The national championship for the second year in a row. And this current edition of Nittany Lions trying to become the fifth team to win the title undefeated in the NCAA era. It happened a couple of times back in the AIAW days. Down 0-2 in this match tonight, and now two championship points to win it. And the other thing is Penn State's very happy to have Megan Hodge up at the net now. Even if they don't win this play, they get to receive serve with Hodge up there to get to take a swing for the title. Texas saves one of them, and now Penn State in serve receive for a championship point. You have two main, you have two front court hitters for Penn State. Hodge, Wilson, Brown in the backcourt. Ashley Engel's been serving tough all night. Quillico to Glass on the overpass. 